Hello everyone, welcome to One In Skin, and this is part three in migrating from Flash to Toon Boom. And today we're going to be having a closer look at the timeline and how that's similar, how that's different, and how we can get things moving efficiently and well. The first thing we're going to do is make a motion tween. We're going to do it on this uh, eagle thing that I made. All right, so I've got three layers, one for each element. Turn all them off. Yeah, so I'll grab that. So first thing we encounter is uh, is only on one frame. Then it vanishes. And we need him to be there for a lot longer than that. Um, so you know how this works. You want to bring out your frames. So right click where you want it to be and see, extend exposure. There we go. So that has it there for that amount of frames. There's a shortcut for this too. E and R will decrease and increase your exposure respectively. And to have it move from one point to another, uh, we can create keyframes uh, without things needing to be symbols first. It will do it with raw art, but it will move everything on the layer and that makes sense when you think about it because on this layer I've got uh, two symbols I'm going to create a keyframe and oops, move one here and one here uh, and you know how a classic tween just it's not going to do it right you know it's standard practice to have one symbol per layer uh, so Toon Boom understands that and kind of just makes it a thing a motion tween will always move the entire layer in its entirety. Every single thing on it will move as if it's all drawn on one sheet of paper and you're physically moving the paper from one place to another. Um, so if you don't have these controls up, right click and there'll just be a timeline view button. I hit that and these controls will appear. Uh, KF, add keyframe. There we go. And another keyframe there. And when you're moving something, because it's still raw vector art, if we grab it and move it, that's just moved the vectors. Uh, we actually have a free transform tool, yeah, which is a bit different to this free transform tool. Um, because it will move whole layers. So notice that it turns purple. If I pick it up and move it, yeah, there we go. We've got a nice motion tween already going. If you go to Windows, uh, toolbars, advanced animation, you'll get these controls here. And these are the free transform controls, but they're kind of separated into different functions, you know, move, rotate, scale, skew, and this one will do 3D depth, but not make things bigger, whatever. Um, and that will let me kind of get this guy however I want it to go, so. Notice that I don't need to click on any like actual transform handles while doing this. So I can be clicking over here and it will just move the whole piece. When you want to play something back, enter will still work. Uh, but up here, there's a play on loop. And these two buttons here, that will turn sound on when you play it. And S stands for scrub. That will have your sound play when you just scrub them back and forth. All right, cool. In Flash, the end of the animation is kind of determined just from how long the overall exposure is. You know, it won't go past that. Uh, here, it's not the case. It goes up until this bracket. So grab that, bring it to the end, and there we go. Cool, that'll do. Motion tweens, or from now on, motion path. Now, next is symbols, or actually, pegs. Symbols are still a thing here, and they work the same way, where it will nest something inside of its own timeline, and will stash it in the library, and do all that kind of stuff. But uh, to be fair, it is a bit clunkier than Flash's method, uh, because they serve a bit of a different purpose. What it's been replaced with, though, is pegs, and they work much nicer from just day-to-day -day animating. This is what we're going to do with uh, the leaf and tree. We're going to have 
uh, the leaf on its you know little looped swaying in the breeze animation and we'll duplicate it a thousand times across the tree and see how it turns out. So as before, I'm going to grab the two layers frames uh, at the end, right click and go to extend exposure. There we go, they're there the whole time. And under leaf, I want to create the first peg. It's this button here. This one is create new layer with the three shapes. This one is create peg and you see it immediately drops it in there. Uh, it's very rare that I'll do a motion tween uh, like we did the, the eagle. Um, actually putting the keyframes on the drawing itself. It makes it a bit trickier to control when you can put them onto a peg, which is like an empty layer that's used to kind of just pinning things to for motion and grouping. It's like a folder. Uh, so on the leaf, I'm gonna create a keyframe here, one on 20, and with the rotate tool, put it on the stem and kind of just put it there, and top one up there, so just doing that. Grab those, copy, and just afterwards, I'm gonna right click and go to paste reverse. There we go. <laughs> Gross. Uh, all right, let's create an ease. How does easing work? I was very fond of Flash's method of easing, which was simply go here, pull to minus 100, and then go to so I'm using a broken tween, so I can't demonstrate it. But you know what I mean. I don't need to show you how to use Flash. That's the whole point where you're watching this. In CS4 and above, Flash introduced the motion editor, which could only be used with the more modernized version of tweening. It had so much going on that it was so difficult to create what you wanted when really you just wanted that, you know, minus 100, plus 100, slow down, speed up, easy. Uh, this thing is kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, if I click on this thing here, It'll bring up the panel and you can see the animation there. And so it's a graph, which is scary at first, but you can control it the way you'd, we did before. So if I hit 50 here, apply 50, there we go. That's gonna slow down and speed up again. So apply previous, it'll take you back to the previous keyframe. Let's knock that up to 50 as well. And I'll put a 50 on this one. And there we go, you can see a nice bell curve, easing, speed up, slow down, fun, great time. So here it goes. Yep. Leaf blowing in the breeze. As realistic as it's gonna get. And the other advantage to easing like that is like, I don't think I'm the only one who does this, that when I want to create, you know, something speed up and slow down in the same loop, I'll break you know, the animation just so I can have the first half of the tween speed up and the second half of the feet, uh, tween slow down. So yeah, not having to put unnecessary keyframes in there is definitely a plus. Okay, so I took a break and tidied that up a bit. So it now moves like that. So it's a bit more of a Slightly more realistic flap, uh, but more importantly, I made it shorter because I want to show you how looping works because, you know, our favorite thing with symbols is that it exists on an independent timeline and will just loop infinitely. So what do we do if it won't just loop infinitely for us? Uh, well, highlight all the frames, copy the animated keyframes, go to the next one and paste, what was it, paste cycle, there we go. So it's normal forward, uh, cycle like five times. Notice the options in there as well, so reverse. So you only have to animate it forwards and it will, you know, automatically paste it, flipping it back and forth. So it will loop forwards and backwards. Always want it normally because we've already made it loop. Oh, nice one. So what's the advantage of having that built into the surface level rather than inside a symbol? Well, for one, it means we're not ducking up and down heaps and heaps of layers all the time. Uh, but what happens when we want to duplicate this thing a ton in order to build a tree out of it? Let's have a play and see how we go. First, I'm going to get the leaf peg and create another peg. So just as you would have a symbol and a symbol, uh, so you can move it around, same deal here. Uh, so this first one, I'm just gonna grab it and move it. 
move it into place. Do, do, do. One thing I forgot to mention before is notice that when I animated the rotation, it didn't matter when I moved the rotation point. Uh, I forgot that was a thing until I went back and made that looping leaf in Flash that it breaks the tween unless you tell it where it's going to rotate first, which is kind of dumb. Okay, so that's good. I want to make it duplicate sets. So notice I can collapse that down. So that's just called left leaf peg peg. Right click that and go to duplicate selected layers. The new one is there. And I can move that where I want it to be. Just like that. One thing to be careful of is that when you are moving uh, things like this, to open the peg layer up. And the reason for that is, is we're only going to be manipulating this point here. If it's collapsed, it's going to affect everything inside it. It Like if there's no keyframe here and then we move it, it's going to create, oops, I'll do it on this layer. Like notice that you can see like hollow white keyframe points. Like you can see where they are and all the layers beneath. Uh, so yeah, if we create a keyframe on this one, for example, it's now generated one all the way down. Uh, that pipeline. Now, as we're, if we just do it here, no dramas. There we go. Uh, I want it displaced a bit. All I need to do is pick up those keyframes and nudge them across a bit. There we go. Ugh, that's probably a bit much, isn't it? That's all right. So you can keep doing this and keep leveling it up. So if I collapse those three leaves into one peg and duplicate that, uh, you know, that animation is going to be in all the duplicates and I can move it across. However, I am mainly just duplicating them out of habit. If you want it to be more like a symbol, you know, the main advantage to symbols is if I have a bunch of them, but I go in and edit one, it affects all of them. Duplicate layers don't do that. They are still separate. If I paint that one, which one is it? Yeah, they're still separate. If we want them to be the same, it's exactly the same procedure. Only go to clone selected layers rather than duplicate. That means they'll be linked to the same artwork and uh, all the same stuff. I will admit that a rig like this, like a tree with lots of small looping leaves, is probably still gonna be best to build using the classic symbol method. I just wanted to demonstrate how the peg structure works because you do use it more often, particularly for you know characters and movement and pinning anything together. So let's have a look at building this same setup with actual symbols. Okay, here's another leaf. Select it all and go to edit, create symbol. Yeah, this all looks familiar. There we go. So it's created a symbol layer and these are a bit different. So notice that it kind of looks like a film strip. To get down inside the symbol properties, you double click it. Uh, Timeline down there, and we get down to its own independent one. So in this case, I'm gonna get uh, that peg animation we had before, copy that, double click inside this timeline, add this leaf to a peg, put that in. Uh, collapse that down. There we go. So in a matter of moments there, I duplicated the sets of three and placed them all around. Whatever advantages are lost with symbols are pretty much gained in efficiency by using pegs. But 
Fortunately, symbols are still there and they still work the same way if you need those functions for any reason. And yeah, those flapping leaves are not looking too bad. At least for our <laughs> demonstrative purposes, if demonstrative is even a word. I hope that helps with putting together some simple motion tweens, easing, grouping drawings together and managing them that way. Tune in next time and we'll have a quick look at the library, which is one of, I think, our favorite features in Flash and what's going on there.